Letting number 8708, Hall Street Improvements, Phase 1, East Grand to LA, Federal Project Number STP 5404603. We have six bids. R. V. Wagner Inc. R. V. W. A. G. N. E. R. Inc. Two million nine hundred seven thousand four hundred thirteen dollars and thirty five cent. Two nine zero seven four one three point three five. Gersherson Construction Company, Inc. G-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N. Construction Company, Inc. 3129220 dollars Three, one, two, nine, two, to zero point zero zero Millstone Weber LLC M I L L S T O N E Weber L L C Three million four hundred twelve thousand two hundred forty one dollars and fourteen cents. Three four one two two four one point one four. Rainy year construction. L L C R A I N E R I Construction L L C three million one hundred thirty five thousand five hundred five dollars and eighty cent three one three five Five zero five point eight zero XL Contracting Inc. XL C O N T R A C T I N G Inc. Three million two hundred seventy thousand one hundred seventy two dollars and eighty seven cent three two seven zero one seven two point eight seven WB West Contracting Company W B W E S T Contracting Company two million eight hundred thirty four thousand seven hundred twenty nine dollars and seventy five cent two eight three four seven two nine point seven five Letting number 8709, Concrete and Brick Removal, Replacement, and Complete Sidewalk Installation for the Street Department. We have four bids.
SBC Contracting Inc. SBC C O N T R A C T I N G Inc. 802,260.50 Bill Pro Concrete Inc. B U I L D P R O Concrete Inc. Seven E. Meyer Contracting, E. M. E. I. E. R. Contracting, seven hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred eight dollars and three cent, seven nine seven five zero eight point o three. Rainier Construction LLC R A I N E R I Construction LLC point zero zero. With a low bidder, please meet with Miss Bryant in the hallway. Thank you. If you're here for the hearing today <coughs> and you haven't signed in and you're going to speak, I need you to come and sign in.
Hearing number 8237. Hearing number 8237 is being conducted pursuant to section 26.100.030 of the revised code of the city of St. Louis. The purpose of the hearing is to determine whether the conditional use permit issued to Tam Avenue Grill CEO Josh Geich to occupy 1223 through 27 Tam as a full drink bar and restaurant with full and rear patio and sidewalk seating subject to certain conditions should be revoked. The conditional use permit is numbered as 122027. The conditions and questions are as follows. Condition 4. The applicant must apply for and receive a permit from the City of St. Louis Building Division before posting permanent signage and permanent signage must be approved by the Office of the Zoning Administrator before being installed. The Office of the Zoning Administrator has the burden to prove that conditional use permit conditions have not been complied with. After all evidence of the Zoning Administrator has been presented, the Board will ask for additional testimony, if any, in support of the revocation. Then, the conditional use holder will be given the opportunity to present evidence. Lastly, the Board will hear other testimony in opposition to the revocation, if any. Your testimony is being recorded. When you come forward, please state your name and address and be sworn in. As you testify, please direct your comments to the Board and not to those in the audience. Members of the audience are asked to remain silent and not coach the witnesses. During your testimony, members of this Board may have questions for you. Following the hearing, the Board will proceed with its regular agenda. Following the conclusion of the regular agenda, the Board will deliberate, discuss, and vote on the hearing. The Board will notify the conditional use holder of its decision by mail in about two weeks. The Board of Public Service has in its possession the following documents which are being introduced into evidence. Item 1, a certified copy of the Zoning Code of the City of St. Louis. Item 2, the conditional use permit numbered as 122027 issued to Tam Avenue Grill CO Josh Geig on October 20th, 2015 to occupy 1223 through 27 Tam Avenue as a full drink bar and restaurant with full and rear patio and sidewalk seating subject to certain conditions. Item 3, a letter dated August 13th, 2019 sent to Tam Avenue Grill CO Josh Geig warning of the violation of condition number 4 that was found upon a recent site inspection and the potential for a revocation hearing should the violations not be corrected within 30 days of the date of the letter. Item 4, photographs documenting the noted violations. And item 5, certified mail dated December 24, 2019, sent to Tam Avenue Grill and to Lexi Pexi LLC from the board secretary providing notice of this hearing. At this time, the board asks the representative of the Office of Zoning Administrator please come forward and be sworn in. I do. My name is Terrell Island, and I'm Zoning Plan Examiner, standing in for the Zoning Inspector, the City of St. Louis. Can you please tell the board about uh, your investigations and any possible violations of the conditions in question? Uh, yes, I went by Tam Avenue Bar and Grill this morning and I uh, took a number of photos and I found that um, per the records in the system in our database that they have applied for all permits for the size that they have. Uh, so this. And those are the photographs and now I also have uh, copies of the Permit applications, I'll, I'll give you those. And this pretty much covers all the signs that they have up that are visible from right of way, from the public right of way. So uh, they installed 10 non-illuminated wall signs on the front of the premises, um, up in the transom windows, uh, such as a happy hour, they have that uh, up in the transom window, uh, patio, uh, craft beer, game room, good food, good times. Uh, even the welcome sign, they've applied for approval for the welcome sign, as well as um, the arrow signs that point to uh, the entrance. 
uh, and then they got a permit for the big wave sign in the back on the patio and you can see that I think on the last photo um, since that is visible from right away if you walk down the alley a little bit you can see the big way now they have other signs on the patio but they're not visible from the alley but we made them get permits for everything that's visible from public right of way um, yeah, in addition to that they um, of course have a permit for the nomad sign the projecting sign that they have up front uh, they have, um, make sure I'm looking at my, okay, here we go. So they applied for permit to put up for approval for 10 signs. Uh, they applied for another permit for, um, the refacing of the illuminated wall sign, which includes that, uh, the projecting sign, you know, they, uh, they refaced that sign. It says Nomads now, which is a commercial kitchen. Um, they have a, a permit for the wall banner that they have up uh, that faces the alley. Uh, and then also they have a, a permit for the cabinet sign that says Tam Avenue Bourne Grill. And then finally they have a permit for, they have permits for, for Nomads, commercial kitchen, and sandwiches fine eat, uh, dine in to go, uh, and then the nomad sign that's painted on the on the um, the awning across the top of the uh, of the entrance there. So they have all of their sign permits. So in summary, condition number four, which was unpermitted signs, they've done diligence. They either have all permits or all applications in, in the hopper for signage permits. Yes. And you at this time see no violations of any conditions on your site inspection right no violations right. questions from the board for our zoning inspector thanks so much for your time okay thank you at this time if there's anyone else present who wishes to testify to road conditions have not been complied with please come forward and be sworn in seeing none the board asks the conditional use permit holder to please come forward and be sworn in I do. Bob Brazil. 5517 Neosho. Go ahead. Tell the board anything you'd like to tell us. Uh, we have applied for all of these permits. We have gotten all these permits. Uh, we did it previous to the letters being sent to us. Right. And somehow uh, they were not processed and lost in City Hall. But we have done it time and time again and we have everything in order okay so that that's an interesting comment and so our director of public safety is not here today to hear that but I think we'll we'll pass that along to them you know I I think I guess the question would be is when the zoning inspector came out and told you about these you applied for these right away oh uh, we had in August yeah we had already applied for all uh, signage permits uh, Nomad is actually a separate entity, totally separate business. Okay. They applied for all of theirs on their own. Okay. Um, and we were also requested to get permits for neon signs that were hanging in our windows, um, which in all of my years of being in this business have never been asked to get those before. Okay. Every bar owner that I know, which is pretty much everyone in the city, has never paid for a permit for a, a neon sign, but we gladly complied and either got a permit or took them down. We do definitely appreciate the fact you applied for a permit, My all the permits, and thank you for that. My concern is the comment about applying for them over and over, and they were not processed. And so this board obviously just regulates what the conditions are that are generated from the zoning department. And so a follow-up conversation definitely will be had. We'll look into that see what that issue was um you know in august when this commentary came up assuming you went right out and applied for these things this should have been resolved relatively quickly obviously the other answer is you take the signs down until you get the permits and then there's not a problem but i realize that takes some amount of effort as well so we thank you for that and i'm going to ask if the board has any further 
questions or comments for the conditional use permit holder. Yeah, I do have one question. I, I assume you're the manager. You're not the actual conditional <coughs> use holder. Is that correct? I am one of the owners of the business. Okay. But your name is Bob, right? Not Zach. What is your first name? Correct. My name is Robert Brazell, okay. a.k.a. Bob Brazell. Uh, we've gone to the business department, um, uh, the business assistance office. There's two names on here. One is Jack, Josh Geik, and one is uh, Zach Outman, I believe, is still listed. That's why and I have my They question. are no longer with our business, nor have they been for years, and we've noted that and tried to you know, get that corrected, but it, it keeps coming up for some reason. So, again, that's a zoning a conditional use permit and we need to get that resolved with zoning because that could be part of the problem too is because the proper names aren't on it and a number of things so I, that's why i was curious when i yeah. director do you have any further comments i do not thank you no thank you any further comments for our conditional use permit holder so again thank you for what you've done thank we you. appreciate that and uh, we will look into it internally and get those names changed, hopefully, and get this resolved so we don't go through this again. Thank you very much, okay. sir. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. If there's anyone else present opposing the revocation that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. Pardon, you want to? Yes. Okay. Opposing the revocation. You are. Yes, you are. I would think. Yes. Uh, my name is Brett and Ryan. I'm uh, the 24th Ward Alderman. I'm swear I'm in real quick. Would you raise your hand? I do. My name is Brett and Ryan. Uh, I'm the 24th Ward Alderman. Uh, I have gone uh, over this kind of time and time again with uh, Bob and the team over at TAM. Uh, this has been kind of a frustrating experience for them. I know it's been frustrating for me. Uh, we have uh, come down to City Hall, I think this will be the fifth or sixth time to try and resolve this issue. Uh, the, the, they had applied for permits. I've been with them to the permit office two or three different times now, um, and things have gotten kind of lost in the shuffle. We've had notices not go to Tam Avenue, but go to a gas station on the north side of the city. Uh, regarding this hearing uh, that we actually happened to catch in in the uh, the office before they were to be sent, but that uh, I believe it was a December 24th notice that went out. It was originally slated to go out to someone who had nothing to, to do with this entity. Um, I, I do have some concerns uh, with some of the, the pictures that were taken as well uh, on the signage. It certainly appears to me that... Uh, the uh, building inspector entered the property uh, there's a back patio on this property and it certainly appears that the inspector actually entered the the business in order to take some of these pictures uh, which is concerning to me if, if if you can see something from the right away you can see it from the right away no problem uh, but you know I, I i don't think it's correct for a building inspector to actually be entering a place of business to take pictures um, it, it, it has been uh, incredibly frustrating because I've been working with uh, with Bob uh, for the last four months, probably, and they've they've been diligently working to come into compliance uh, on this. But virtually every step along the way, uh, the city has set up additional hurdles that that didn't need to be there. I know when when we uh, went over to uh, zoning uh, that. We were able to overcome, you know, some of that. We were able to get on the same page, but uh, ultimately, I think that part of the reason that we're here today is based on some complaints on this business that don't have to do with what we're what we're actually hearing today. I think that um, that they've become a bit of a a target in the neighborhood. Uh, they have one of the, uh, I believe, one of the best patios in the city of St. Louis for for going and uh, drinking some beers and watching a game. Uh, on the flip side of that, there has been some, uh, some residents who aren't thrilled with the patio being there, and I think that, um, that unfortunately uh, it, this may be a situation where the, the squeaky uh, wheel is getting the grease and that people are looking for 
new and exciting ways to to make life difficult for uh, for this business. Uh, that being said, uh, they have diligently worked to come into compliance on everything. They've been on the phone with me several times. I've met with them several times to make sure that uh, when we got to this hearing, that it would hopefully be as painless of an experience as possible for them, and we can just kind of rip this Band-Aid off and let them get back to business. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, if anyone has anything on, on uh, you know, my experience with them. So first of all, thank you for your time today, Alderman. We appreciate you coming down and supporting a good business in the city. Um, I would just make this comment that, you know, the, if they applied for their permits right up front, and if something like this would come up in the future, my recommendation would be is to keep copies of those permits so that the zoning department, you could simply show it to them and say, here it is. And what we have received is at the point in time when this started, is that after 30 days, there were no permits applied for. Again, I'm not faulting so, anyone because it sounds like it got, may have gotten lost in the shuffle, but for the property uh, conditional use permit holder, I would always recommend getting copies from any agency here in the city so you could simply pull it out and say, I did this, okay? So my understanding is that they do have some of those copies. However, the city was not in possession of those copies. Uh, which is a whole different headache. Um, yeah, that's a whole different topic right there. <laughs> so, okay, so. so we won't go down that road then. If that's the case, we need to look internally and determine what the issues are, and hopefully this doesn't happen again. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, they've done diligence and done what they were supposed to do, and I hope that this hearing is painless for everyone. So with that, I'll open it up to the board for questions. I was simply going to make a comment. I appreciate the alderman's candor giving us some information about the communication. And I commend both entities, the alderman, the elected official, and the business for communicating with each other trying to resolve a problem. I'm not here to dictate what Mr. Narayan's duties are, but I'm, it sounds like he's trying to do the right thing for a business in his neighborhood sure. and in his ward. So that's what we want to hear instead of hearing that the alderman and, or the alderwoman has never even heard from the business. Sounds like there's been a lot of communication. Hopefully this gets rectified expeditiously. And uh, w One additional comment, if I may. Um, one, of, one of the headaches that uh, we've had that uh, may continue down if we don't kind of get out in front of it, um, there seems to be a misunderstanding that the business next door to TAM, which is Nomad, um, it's where the old Max was, for any uh, who are familiar with the business. They're two separate entities with different ownership groups, and there's a, a separate lease on the building. Uh, they do happen to share a, an internal doorway, um, but the city wouldn't issue licenses for Nomad until TAM cleared up this problem. So I also had the folks at Nomad quite unhappy with me that we couldn't move that forward. So uh, in the future, if we could make sure to uh, put a bit of a pry bar in between the two entities, um, you know, they, they have legally set up two entities. They're under two different addresses, two different leases, two different ownership groups. Uh, and it, it's not really fair to either one of the, the businesses to, to be responsible for the faults of the other one. Again, that's a, a zoning issue, and we're going to have to look at that internally and see what that mechanism is that created that. I will tell you in my time here, I've never seen that. So this is a first. So we hope to get that resolved. Other questions from the board? Okay. Alderman, thanks so much. Is that it? Is that it? We're starting construction next week to cover it all. Thank you so much. Get your permits. Well, thanks for your time, Alderman. <laughs> <laughs> If there's anyone else present uh, opposing the revocation that wish to testify, please come forward. The documents that I gave you, uh, one says October 18, 2019, November 5, 2019, and November 13, 2019. So I don't know uh, what's going on in regards to the um, application made in August. So I, I just want to make that clarification, but... We do have, I mean, when you apply for a permit, of course, we put the date on there that you apply. So 
um, and you have copies of that. So we do. Okay. Yeah. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone else present opposing the revocation that wish to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. Seeing none, the matter concerning hearing number 8237 is now closed. And actually, I would like to introduce two items in evidence for today's hearing. Uh, the photos is item A from the zoning inspector, and the permit applications is item B from the zoning inspector. The matter hearing number 8237 is now closed and submitted. We'll move on to our next hearing for today. Hearing number 8244 is now being conducted pursuant to Chapter 8.97 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis. The applicant, Michael Bradley, CEO, Outlaw Inc. Tattoo Studio, is proposing to operate a tattoo studio at 2602 North 14th Street. Due to the nature of the business, the applicant is required to hold a license and permit issued pursuant to Chapter 8.97 in addition to any other requirements under law. As outlined in Section 8.97.070 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis, the Board of Public Service may approve such application after a hearing if it is satisfied that the applicant is of good moral character and that the applicant has given evidence that he will be able to operate the premise in compliance with all regulations and laws governing such premise and the applicant is a resident of the state and his neighborhood consent petition is in due form and the applicant's premise are not within 500 feet of an elementary school. The Board of Public Service has in its possession the following documents which are being introduced into evidence. Item 1, a certified copy of Chapter 8.97 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis and St. Louis City Ordinance 68571 as amended. Item two, the application for a tattoo parlor with five chairs submitted to the board sec secretary with the drawing of the proposed premise. Item three, a copy of the letter from the director of health dated December 11, 2019 to BPS finding no evidence of health code violations at this facility. Item four, a letter sent to the applicant dated December 24, 2019 providing notice of today's hearing. Item five, a copy of the public notices of today's hearing. And item six, an occupancy permit issued for 2602 North 14th Street for use as a tattoo parlor with five tiers. At this time, the board will swear in and hear from, excuse me, your testimony is being recorded. When you come forward, please state your name and address and be sworn in. As you testify, please direct your comments to the board and not to those in the audience. Members of the audience are asked to remain silent and not coach the witnesses. During your testimony, members of the board may have questions for you. Following the hearing, the board will proceed with its regular agenda. Following the conclusion of the regular agenda, the board will deliberate, discuss, and vote on the hearing. At this time, the board will swear in and hear from the city representatives present followed by the applicant and those in support of the application. The board will then allow those in opposition, if any, to address the board. At this time, the board asks the zoning inspector, please come forward and be sworn in. I do. My name is Terrell Island, Zoning Plan Examiner for the City of St. Louis, and I'm standing in for the Zoning Inspector. And what is your recommendation as to the application for the tattoo establishment at 2602 North 14th Street? I think that uh, they have met all requirements. Of course, tattoo parlors do not require plant petition anymore, so um, I did not have to obtain any signatures. So as long as they have met um, a conditional use approval um, you know, the inspection of the Department of Health, um, all of um, their um, licensing is in good standard. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay. It should be fine, yeah. Anything else that you'd like to tell the board? Um, no, not at this time. Okay. Any questions from the board for our zoning inspector? Seeing none, thank you very much. At this time, the board asks representative of the Department of Health, please come forward and be sworn in.
I do. Would you state your name for the board, please? John Ward. Did you perform an inspection of the proposed tattoo parlor at 2602 North 14th Street? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you determine that the proposed tattoo parlor complies with all applicable health, safety, and regulations as promulgated by the Director of Health? Yes, I did. Okay. And is there anything else you'd like to tell the board? No, sir. Okay. Does the board have any questions for our health inspector? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, will the applicant please come forward and be sworn in? Michael Bradley Jr. Michael, you have a very interesting last name. If you notice, my last name is exactly the same as yours, so good. Okay, I have a few questions for you. Okay. Are you a resident of the state of Missouri? Yes. Okay. How many tattoo chairs are being applied for today? Five. Okay. And are you aware that any increase in the number of chairs must be applied for with this board? Yes. Okay. How many employees will you have at this establishment? Oh. Five. Okay. And do all the tattoo artists have their Missouri State licenses? Yes. Okay. And do you have all necessary Missouri licenses you need? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go through a list of requirements and provisions of Chapter 8.97 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis. and would ask you just to answer at the end of each one. Okay. Number one, do you understand as an operator of a tattoo parlor you are at all times responsible for the orderly conduct of the tattoo parlor and all acts of any agents, servants, or employees in the operation of your business? Yes. Okay. Item two, pursuant to chapter 8.97, tattoo parlors may only be open between 9 a.m. and 1 a.m. What are your proposed hours of operation? Of a 10 to 11. Okay. Item three, Tattoo parlors shall be kept clean and well lighted so the rear of the premise is plainly visible from the front of the premise. Will you be able to maintain your tattoo parlor in that manner? Yes. And finally, item four. No tattoo parlor shall allow or permit any loud noises, boisterous or disorderly conduct in or around the premise or on the grounds of such premise. And the tattoo parlor shall prevent loitering of persons or premise on or around the grounds of the tattoo parlor Will you be able to comply with these regulations? Yes. Okay. And is there anything else that you would like to tell the board? Um, I just want to make sure that my mentor's name lives on, and that's why I'm continuing the tattoo shop to be open, because if I wouldn't, it probably would have closed. And he did a lot for the up-and-coming artists that are employees at the shop, so I don't want to let them down. All right. Does the board have any questions for our applicant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. If there's anyone else in favor of the application that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in at this time. Seeing none, if there's anyone in opposition to the tattoo parlor that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. Seeing none. The matter concerning hearing number 8244 is now closed and submitted. The board will now continue with its regular agenda. After the regular agenda, the board will deliberate and vote on this hearing. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Here. Director Wilson. Here. Director Hayes. Here. Director Augustin. <coughs> Director Eccles. Here. Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley. Here we have a quorum. I'll call this meeting order. From the President. Plans and specifications for lending number 8704 for the vehicle wash bay at airfield maintenance at St. Louis Lambert International Airport. Plans and specifications for lending number 8714 concrete and brick removal replacement and complete sidewalk installation SP113. 
Supplemental Agreement Number 12 to PSA Number 1178, Testing and Inspection Services of Materials for Various Construction Projects, Lambert St. Louis International Airport. Supplemental Agreement Number 13 to PSA Number 1178, Testing and Inspection Services of Materials for Various Construction Projects, Lambert St. Louis International Airport. Amendment Number 13 to the Facilities Management Division contract number 68616 for building custodial services at 1520 Market, building 1520 Market Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63103, and other city-owned and operated building per, per prior amendments. Equipment Services Division contract for the diagnosis, repair, replacement, and service for our OEM computer and drive systems, engine and transmission on, on equipment to include construction equipment, Bobcat, Dusan, and Tuk Tukchia. Agreement with preliminary engineering services between the City of St. Louis and Union Pacific Railroad for complete removal and reconstruction of existing Compton Avenue Bridge over Mill Creek Valley. Emergency work orders issued for the month of November 2019 by the Department of the President and Facilities Management Division Board of Public Service for emergency work and repairs requiring prompt attention. Emergency work orders issued for the month of December 2019 by the Department of the President and Facilities Management Division Board of Public Service for emergency work and re repairs requiring prompt attention. One festival zone recommend approved subject to certain conditions as follows. NHL All-Store Game, January 25, 2020 at Chestnut, Chestnut and Market will, use, will be used for media, player, and NHL sh shuttles transporting to and from Enterprise Center. 14th Street will be closed for concert concerts. Closure will be from January 23rd through the 26th, 2020. From the President and Director of Public Utilities and Streets, joint recommendation that the following permits be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District to construct approximately 380 linear feet of sanitary and storm sewers varying in sizes from 12 inch to 30 inch in diameter. Special connection to an existing nine feet by 11 feet conduit and apparatuses along Valley Drive and crossing Riverview Drive recommends approval subject to certain conditions. Land clearance for redevelopment authority, removal and replacement of cobblestone pavement and curbs, construct ADA accessible ramps, removal and replacement of street lighting, miscellaneous storm sewer construction, new landscaping, etc. at first from East Bridge underpass to Dr. Martin Luther King recommends approval. From the Director of Public Utilities, recommendation that the board declares as the emergency action to replace 110 feet of damaged six foot chain link per parameter fence at the Chain of Rocks water treatment plant. From the Director of Public Utilities and Streets, joint recommendation that the following permits be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Seven AT&T permits. Contractor to access manhole at 1199 South Spring and board 90 feet east to the customer manhole at 1201 Grand. AT&T contractor to access manhole in front of 1201 Grand and board 100 feet west to a customer handhole at 1201 Grand. Lane closure will be needed. AT&T contractor to access manhole at Madison and Knapp, 1618 Knapp and place 2,457 feet of cable through existing manhole run into Madison and 20th. Then AT&T contractor to access existing handhold at 2212 Malafi Street, parking and bore 56 feet south to, to Cass, then 1,930 feet west along Cass to the northeast corner of Cass and Jefferson. Lane closure will be needed. AT&T contractor to access manhole at the site of 1440 South Compton and place an existing conduit 639 feet south. Place a new handhold at the corner of South Compton and Alley and Alley south of St. Vincent 
and board 185 feet west to the rear of 3200 St. Vincent lane closure will be needed. AT&T to contractor to access manhole at the side of 900 North Tucker and board 25 feet south to the sidewalk, then 25 feet east to customer conduit to service at 900 North Tucker, lane closure will be needed. AT&T will start at an existing AT&T manhole located on Manchester at Hampton, side of 1615 Hampton, and place a new fiber cable in existing underground duct. Run, run to existing manhole located at front of, in, at the front of 5641 Manchester, etc. AT&T contractor to access manhole at the side of 1316 Savage Boulevard and board 225 feet to manhole at the front of 707 Park Avenue. Lane closure will be needed. AT&T at the rear of 4116 McCree cut and restore pavement to trench approximately 15 feet of new service wire. Service wire will then continue out of St. Louis City right away and on to private customer property to restore service, remove old pole. Joint recommendation that three permits for charter be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. We'll cut a sidewalk slab out of the base of the pole in front of 4400 Geraldine on the north side of the building and place a vault. Open cut the street in a northwest direction 40 feet to, an op to the opposite of Geraldine and enter into customer's property. Charter will be installing underground fiber cable to Amarin at 4400 Union Boulevard. Starting at 3712 Laclede, Charter Pole located in the alley to board 668 feet west towards 3763 Forest Park Avenue, placing a vault and finishing at 3763 Forest Park Avenue, entering into private property. Cutting a 3 by 10 feet hole at the base of the pole at the corner of South Ewing and Clark to the vault at, at the same corner. This will be on the southwest corner of 2837 Clark. The cut will run south from the pole to the vault. This square footage of the cut will be 60 feet. Joint recommendation that MCI Metro access starting at existing manhole located at the side of 7103 Drury Lane, board and place conduit 299 feet east along the north side of alley ending at existing handhold located at the rear of 7140 Wellington Court. Tel teleport, teleport Communications America, Inc. This project is a relocation of existing Teleport Communications America, TCA, facilities located in the east right away of North Broadway beginning 250 feet south of Mallinckrodt Street to 300 feet north of Buchanan Street. TCA has a three 1.25 inch conduit and fiber optic cable located along the right of way line in this segment of right of, of roadway. The property owner is still installing the fence along the right of way line and TA is proposing relocating further into the right of way to ensure clearance between their facilities for that building. This will consist of two hand holes and 556 feet of three 1.25 inch HDPE conduits. From the Director of Streets. Recommendation that permit for Friends of Fountain Park, Inc. to install 20 neighborhood signs surrounding Kings Highway, Delmore, and Page be filed by reason of the fact that additional information was requested, but it was never submitted and the applicant has not followed up. If the applicant still plans to have signs installed, the application will have to be resubmitted. From the Director of Public Safety, we have the conditional uses. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the board. My name is Sandra Long, Zoning Specialist for the City, and I'll be representing the Building Commissioner at today's meeting. Per order, Board Order Number 766 transmitted herewith are recommendations for the following conditional use applications. Approval is recommended for five applications, 3120 to 26 Alfred, 5140 Delmar, 
234 North 11th Street, 3901 North 23rd Street, 4001 North 22nd Street. <coughs> Excuse me. Approval with conditions is recommended for 16 applications. 3623 Taft, 3712 Taft, 1951 Hebert, 1912 East DeSoto, 5034 Stephens, 1403 North Union, 3328 North Florissant, 5331 Pennsylvania, 5926 Park Lane, 7230 Emily, 4302 South Compton, 7315 South Broadway, 5713 Gravoy, 8901 Riverview, 6411 Hampton, 5411 Gilmore. I request that these recommendations be approved as submitted. Thank you. Are there any questions on our conditional uses from the board? President Ridley, I didn't see the items on South Compton, South Broadway, Riverview, and North 22nd. I don't know if I'm missing a page or if it's everyone else. I have an additional page. I had an additional page in my That's packet separating them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here I see it's on the map. That's all right. Yeah, it was sorry. three separate hearings. Additional questions? No. Okay. All right, on the um, um, 6411 Hampton, my understanding that the applicant hasn't contacted or discussed anything with the Neighborhood Association or the Alderman, and uh, the Alderman has requested an opportunity to um, speak to him before this is approved. Okay. So do we want to continue it? So that's probably where we're going to go with that. Okay. okay. Are there any additional comments or questions on the conditional use? So I would ask for a motion um, to approve with continuing 6411 Hampton. So, so second. Moved and second for approval. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Augustine? Aye. Director Eccles? Aye. Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley? Aye. Approved. Hearing number 8237 Tam Avenue Grill, 1223 through 27 Tam Avenue. We heard from our zoning inspector that condition concerning condition number four, all signs have either been permitted or have been applied for a permit. We heard from our conditional use permit holder that there were some concerns with the process, which we will definitely look into and inquire about. And we heard from our alder person the same, and that our alder person spoke that this was a good business, although there are some uh, forces in the neighborhood that may be creating some issues. So with that little bit of background, I'll open the floor for any discussion. Seeing none, do I have a motion? I move to um, not revoke. Okay. Second. So motion and second not to revoke. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Gustin? Aye. Director Eccles? Aye. Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley? Aye. Not revoke. Hearing number 8244 for Outlaw Inc. Tattoo Studio at 2602 North 14th Street. We heard from our zoning inspector that there were no issues uh, with the applicant. We heard from our applicant that he has all licenses and will comply with all regulations of Chapter 8.97 of the Revised Code. And we also heard from our health department that there were no issues. So with that brief narrative, I will open the floor for any discussion. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion, please. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Augustin? Aye. Director Eccles? Aye. Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley? Aye. Approved. I'd ask you to turn your attention to our meeting minutes from last Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes as presented? Seeing now, take a motion to approve, please. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and second for approval of last week's minutes. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie? Abstain. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Scobie? I mean, I'm sorry. Director Augustine? Aye. Director Eccles? Aye. 
Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley. Aye, the minutes are approved. Today's agenda, questions or comments on our agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Moved and second for approval of today's agenda. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes. Aye. Director Gustin. Aye. Director Eccles. Aye. Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley. Aye. Today's agenda is approved. Motion for adjournment, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.